Hi everyone, we're going to look at the next lab, which is alum, which is a nickname. Okay, it's actually kind of a complex chemical name, I'll show you in a second. Alum, which is actually a useful material, it's used as kind of a, a conditioner for lakes and things like that, like a fertilizer. Okay, so alum from aluminum beverage cans. You can actually recycle aluminum cans to make something useful, and that's exactly what we would do in this experiment, <laughs> should we be on campus. Um, unfortunately, you know, they did a reasonable job on... Uh, on the web page there. So go to Canvas, that kind of leads into the checklist here. Okay, go to the group site. And uh, this one is simply a downloadable file, okay, like a Word file. Okay, so you're going to fill it in. Okay, so no pivot. Okay, so you're going to go and uh, download this one. Uh, follow the instructions, you'll find um, instructions course uh, some pictures of actually what you see during your experiment which I'll draw kind of hand draw but kind of hopefully superimpose those pictures on top and obviously some data okay and what I'm going to do is work through my regular semester if you wish uh, pre-lab give you all the background and then kind of give you a couple of hints on the math there okay so <clears throat> And then the usual thing, just hand it in, um, you know, by the Friday, okay? So, Friday, as usual. Now then, so, let's talk about this experiment, okay? Now you can read through this, and I'm going to kind of decipher all this stuff, right? Because there's a lot of details in this experiment. And it kind of reminds me of one of those, it's called a shell game, right? So if you ever see these people on the street, they have like a little kind of pee under a couple of, uh, they have a cup with a pee under it and two other cups and they whiz them around and you've got to kind of say where the pee is. <laughs> and they take your money, right? Okay, you've got to keep your eye on the pee, right? So keep your eye on that. How do you do that? Well, the pee in this one is the aluminum. Okay, so there's going to be a bunch of experiments. As long as we keep our eye on the aluminum, and we'll see that these reactions are sequential, so at the end we can actually add them together and cancel a bunch of stuff and make our final experiment slides and ladders, if you like, um, simpler. Okay, so let's just look through it, okay? So first things first, what we're going to do, we're going to set up the reaction, okay? So, plan. Convert scrap aluminum to alum okay and alum is the name is potassium aluminum sulfate dodecahydrate right so that's k right and then it's a complex ion al so4 twice dot 12 h2o now be careful with this right this is alum potassium aluminum sulfate dodecahydrate right when you work out the molecular weight of this be careful it's two sulfates one aluminum, one potassium, and then you add, this little dot here is kind of interesting, it's like this 12 waters are actually contained within the structure. It's like um, when you have ions of different sizes, so if I kind of draw a picture like that, so these are ions of different sizes, there's gaps, right? In those gaps, you can actually hold water. It's a bit like, you know, your desiccant, like your uh, <laughs> this little package you get out of the sneakers and it says do not eat. <laughs> it's a desiccant, right? So it absorbs water. So basically it's an empty sponge, right? But when we put the water in there, we get like a stoichiometric amount. So you're going to add, so if you worked out the molecular weight of that, and we'll do it later, you work out all this and you add 12 waters, 12 times 18. Okay. So that's aluminum to alum. And the alum has the formula potassium, aluminum, sulfate, dodecahydrate. Okay. Okay, so how are we going to do it? Well, if you did this lab, right, the first thing you do is you get some aluminum and you take your can, you take your pop can and you cut it into like a two by one inch kind of sheet like that, right? And you really, really polish it, right? And you polish it so it's got all the kind of the, the paint and all the kind of the corrosion and all that, right? So it's nice and shiny. So a nice shiny piece of aluminum, nice clean piece of aluminum reacts much better, okay? so. Take your aluminum and then you basically, get, with a pair of scissors, cut it into these little squares, okay? So take your aluminum and you cut it into squares. So you have these kind of tiny little squares, you know, literally, you know, five millimeters, quarter of an inch by quarter of an inch, right? Okay? And then you take those squares of aluminum, okay, and you cut them up so they increase the surface area so it reacts quicker, okay? And you put those little aluminum squares into a beaker and you weigh them, okay? So you have some weighed 
aluminum solid. And that's your first reactant, okay? So you're gonna weigh some aluminum solid. Hopefully I got a nice picture on the screen for you, okay? Now what you do, and I'll kind of talk you through the experiment and the theory as we go, right? So what you do, let's move this. You write your aluminum, so take your aluminum solid and you know the weight of this, right? It's approximately one gram or something like that, right? We'll do the exact numbers on your data sheet, right? So you take approximately a gram of aluminum, your number will be slightly different probably. There it is, right? And all the time when we react aluminum or the compounds containing aluminum, aluminum is going to be the limiting reactant. So we're not going to use any other reagents in our calculations, we're just going to assume their excess, right? And that's important. So this is the peanut, right? Or this is the, the you know, the, the pea under the cup, right? Keep your eye on the aluminum, right? So moles of aluminum will turn into moles of product later, okay? So we're going to react it with, and it says in the first one, hydroxide solution. It turns out that if I do the complete balanced equation to aluminum, and this is actually, you know, straight from your lab notes here, plus six waters plus two KOH, that's aqueous. That's essentially drain cleaner, right? And it turns into, now careful, remember I said keep your eye on the, on the P. It turns into this thing. And there's the key thing. Plus 3H to a H2 gas. So these aluminum squares, which are sitting in the bottom of your beaker, when you add water and KOH, turn into, important, aqueous, right? So aqueous, so it dissolves, all right? So if you think back to your sand salt mixture, because this is now dissolved, any remaining crud in the beaker, and there would have been some, you know, because cleaning's not perfect, you can just filter it off. So you'd filter this and collect, right? So filter and collect this. Okay, now we do this in a fume hood because look what we're making here. We're making hydrogen gas, which is flammable, right? So we want to do this in a fume hood. Okay, so we reflux this, we heat it, so we kind of put the reactant in there, we put like a little kind of watch glass over the top so any kind of liquid escaping condenses and falls back in. That's called refluxing, so you heat it and it condenses and falls back in. The volume doesn't go down too much, and you know, when you're done, all the little squares have gone away, and it's just kind of a solution. You collect that solution, which is an aluminum hydroxide compound. Okay, but the main thing is it's soluble. So keep your eye on the aluminum. We've turned it in from a solid into a solution. We collect the solution by a filtration, but we keep the liquid. We throw away any remaining solids. Okay, all right, so all well and good. So that's our first step, solid to aqueous. Keep that liquid, fair enough. So this is now our new reactant, right? Remember, we've got to turn it into that weird alum later on, which is a solid. So there are several steps to that, right? So the next step is we take our, let's label that one. Our next step is we take our, and I'll write the formula right off the bat here. I'm working from my notes, right? So there's our stuff, right, from before. I'll move it up for you. There's our stuff from before. So we take it away in our beaker, right? So in the lab we collect a beaker and we're going to add a bunch of acid to it. So H2SO4, we'd actually do this back at the desk because there's no gas comes out. Be careful, it's an acid, right? But um, what does it turn into? It turns into two aluminum hydroxide, oh, aluminum hydroxide plus three minus one, right? That's a solid plus some other stuff. All right, so we've gone from an aqueous to a solid. We see the appearance of a white solid. It's not the one we want, but it's the, you know, we're keeping our eye on the aluminum. There it is. Now, interesting, now interesting, we actually make some potassium sulfate here, which comes back later, okay? But just remember that's still in the beaker, all right? Okay, so I made this thing, all right? Now, it turns out we're gonna, add this in a great excess, yeah? And it's very interesting what happens here because this stuff, I'll go to the next page. All right, so this aluminum hydroxide solid, all right? And I'll just balance it on the fly here. Two of those reacted with the excess sulfuric acid turns into Al2, SO4, three aluminum sulfate, 
aqueous, right? So it disappears, it reappears, and it disappears again. So it went from solid to aqueous, solid to aqueous, right? <laughs> With me, right? So there we go. Plus, now we're going to get this balanced up, six water. Okay, fair enough. So we have this beaker sitting on our desk and we're adding reagents and stirring and it kind of disappears, reappears, disappears. Fair enough, right? But it's just changing its formula as it does so. Right now it's in the disappeared state, right? But we're nearly there, okay? Nearly there because, remember that potassium sulfate we had sitting in the beaker? Guess what? This one now reacts with that to form what we want. Can't read my writing, these equations are in the packet. Okay. And it does happen in aqueous solution, so we can use water as a reactant. I'll write it down here. 2K, the thing we want. Potassium aluminum sulfate dodecahydrate. Solid. Alright. Make sure I got this right. Okay. All right, so there it is. We've made our solid, okay? So I went through all those steps, yeah? Just, but we added two reagents, hydroxide essentially and acid, right? And it went through sequential reactions actually in situ to make our product. And that will appear as a solid we'd filter, collect, dry, right? So in a lab, we'd weigh the filter paper, we'd filter it out onto the filter paper, put it in the oven and dry it, and we'd then, at the end, remove it, subtract the mass of the filter paper from the filter paper and the product, get the mass of the product. So at the end of the day, mass product. And of course, that's the actual yield. Okay, I'll show you a slides and ladders in a second for the theoretical yield, but um, you know, you will have on your data sheet an actual yield, right? So many grams, fair enough. Now, <clears throat> that's the reaction. <laughs> now, the good thing about this experiment is if we keep our eye on that P under the cup, so to speak, right, we can combine all the reactions, and I think it does ask you to do this in, in the experiment, right, but when you combine all the reactions, just like a simultaneous equation, things cancel, right, and when you combine all the equations, this is what you get. You get two aluminum, right, solid, that's what we started with, that's our first reactant, plus two KOH, that was one of our first reactants as well, and then we added H2SO4 in excess, right? It all happened in water. <laughs> Turns into 2K Al SO4 <laughs> twice dot 12 H2O solid plus 3H2 gas. Okay, fair enough. So when we combine all of those reactions along the way, we get this final net equation, essentially, yeah? Now that's kind of cool, because remember, all these are excess, right? Excess, excess. So the slides and ladders is real simple. You're gonna go from grams of aluminum, whatever it was, or around a gram, whatever it was, you're gonna slide down, slide, climb down, and these are all like this. Slide across and go up for Theoretical yield. Actual theoretical, you can work out percent yield, right? Now, very, very important, be careful here because that molecular weight, and I'm feeling kind because I know you just said your midterm, right? Okay. What is the molecular weight of this thing? Well, it's going to be 12 waters plus four oxygens times two is eight times two sulfurs, one aluminum one potassium, the molecular weight of all that is 474 grams per mole, which I'll give you. Aluminum, just from the periodic table, 27. Okay, so there you go. You can find the theoretical yield using this scheme. Compare it to your actual weight amount of alum from your experiment, and you can work out theoretical actual percent yield, right? Use the two to work out the percent yield. Okay, now the questions are all very similar and relate to slides and ladders around a similar scheme. Okay, so you should be okay there. Okay, remember, <laughs> I know you've got a busy week, but try and look at this early. Okay, try and look at this early. I'm um, obviously going to be on Teams on Thursday morning. So if you've got questions about your midterm, of course, or this lab, 
live will be due on Friday, of course. So um, Thursday is a good time to ask. All right. Just look through the questions here real quick. Yep. It's pretty straightforward questions if you know how to work it out using this information. Okay, stop there. See you guys next time.